Hey, what's going on and welcome back to another MTG video. So today I'm just deciding I'm just going to play some Rakdos. Um, show you guys some gameplay which you can use to hopefully help to improve your game. Um, okay, let's think. This hand's decent. Like, we get um, Oven into Priest. Um, Canyon Slough later on into the game. Allowing us to cycle the land for a card. Um, I doubt we will play it as a land. Ah, Gruel. Hmm. If he's got a um, Bone Crusher Giant, I'm not. Sh I'm not exactly quite sure what the Gruel decks play these days. But if he's got Bone Crusher Giant, we're covered. I hate Barney Tree Amos Three Turn Two. It's just such a powerful card. Um, if you guys want me to do a deck tech for Gruel and Historic, then I can do that. Double Burning Tree. I'm assuming it's going to be into a Bone Crusher Giant. Or another one. <laughs> Even worse. Oh, that is, that is disgusting. And we've got Scrap Poop Scrounger in our hand as well. Oh, this is just a really, a really, really poor hand. Gonna take this. We can pump three for free damage. Oh no, this is awful. I suppose if he doesn't draw any lands, um, it, it's decent. But if Sigurd's land gruel spellbreaker or something, it's looking really poor for us right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's just nothing we can do against that, really. Oh. Uh, I mean, Gruul is supposed to be a decent matchup. I mean, I will add three copies of Noxious Grasp, two Fatal Pushes. We'll take out two Gutter Bones, two Scrap Poop Scrounger. Uh, Chandra's a little bit slow. But I feel that's the best way to sideboard, um, at least in my opinion. But yeah, there, there has really been a growth in Gruul in Historic lately. Um, so I am feel, feeling like I'm going to do a deck tech on it. But the new set comes out soon, so... Um, I am going to hope and do it before that comes out. Um, but when the new set comes out, I will be posting a load more content on uh, the best decks in that format. Um, and what I think anyway. Um, so if you want to subscribe and, you know, turn notifications on. So that when I do post that content, you're ready for it. And you get notified. I'm going to play Priest. I just like it a little bit more in this position. I will also play Canyon's Slow Tapped, even if I want to. Unless I draw an untapped land. <sighs> that Burning Tree Emissary card is a massive powerhouse. Yeah, I mean... What... <laughs> What can you do, really? Let's play Mayhem Devil. I, th I feel that's the best play in this situation. Um, next turn we can go Fabled Passage, Dreadhorde Butcher, Sacrifice of Food. Sac you know, we can do a lot of stuff next turn. Apart from if he... Okay... Um, I'm really not sure what to do here. I think I'm just going to go Fabled Passage into Dreadhorde Butcher. Um, that seems like to me the best uh, route forward. Um, I didn't want to swing it with Devil unless he had another Magma Spray or something to deal with it. Or it's possible that all he had was a Questing Beast or something. Let's leave it like this, and then hopefully he attacks through thinking that I'll block with a devil. Okay, well, he, you know. Uh, I, I am going to, like, just deal with it this way. Blocking with a devil there would have been really bad. Um, this way, we go up to 21. 
um, he's tapped out let's play Midnight Reaper I'm, do I play the land tapped? no and we're also not going to swing in because I don't think um, yeah I don't think trading a Mayhem Devil for a Burning Tree Emissary is a good trade We'll, we'll let that go through. Um, we could always sacrifice to kill the Pelt Collector, but I think next turn um, we're just going to... Okay, I will definitely take that. Swing in with just this guy. He has to trade with both, or he can just take the full damage. I sacrifice it, deal one anyway. Um, we do this first, because if we get a... I ordered that very incorrectly. I'll have to aim at him. If you get an untapped land now, it's a bit of a shame. But... Yeah, oh well. The heart of the cards and all that. Even so, we can still cycle the canyon slough. So it could still have been the right play. Okay. He could always start sacking his lands now. Fatal push that. Then we swing in with a devil. I don't want to swing in with the Midnight Reaper. Um... I could always sacrifice two lands to kill this, but um, at some point he'll just have to chump. And I want to kind of keep these lands up in case he plays another creature that I would rather kill than just a 2-2 two -two burning tree emissary. Okay. Now we're just going to kill this. Yeah, and we would have lethal next turn because we could swing in for free, sacrifice the Midnight Reaper after combat, sacrifice the food, and that would be 8 damage. Um, do we want to have Act of Treason as well? I think that's something to consider, definitely. Um, no. no. We're, we're just going to leave it like this. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's definitely the best way to play, um, play this deck. Also, guys, could you let me know if the audio is better in this video? Because I have just invested in a new microphone. Um, so I'm just testing out this video to see if it actually is... If it actually is good. Um, lead with Oven um, and Swamp. Next time we can play Dragon Skull Summit, Dreadhorde Butcher or Priest, um, depending on how we're feeling. Uh, this guy's probably going to play out eight copies of... Okay... Interesting turn. What we'll do is we'll swing in with Dreadhorde Butcher. If he goes to block it, we get rid of a ramp spell. If he doesn't block it, um, it gives us an interesting decision. Because I'm happy to get rid of a land where elves do one damage. Because it stops him from being able to play Questing Beast next turn. We haven't seen any red mana yet. There it is. Burning Tree Emissary. Scavenging is Okay. <clears throat> it's a bit of a nombo here. Um, scavenging ooze plus Graft Digger's Cage. Because I can't bring anything back anyway. Um, I suppose he can buff it up by two. Make it a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, I mean... He's not had a strong hand, but then I've got six lands here, so. Mana Screw beats Mana Flood. Because they have strong spells in their hand, whereas I have weak spells. And nothing to do with them. <sighs> do I play this out? I mean, what do I gain from it? Nothing. So, it's just better to play. Uh, 
I mean, there's, no, there's nothing we can really do in this situation. We've just got to try and hope we get some good cards at some point soon. So we take four total, go down to... Um, well, go down to 12. That's So I'm including seven, well, I suppose he exiles creatures. So I guess we're taking nine, going down to 10. I mean, I think it's just right for him to exile from his own, apart from if he's got a spell. All right, okay, this this could be a nice card to kind of stall out with. Um, yeah. I suppose if we get a Claim the Firstborn or a Kari's S Expertise, we can take the Ooze and then start taking control of a game. Um, he's probably got some Gruul Spellbreakers in hand and he's just waiting on a source of red mana. Um, yeah, maybe a whole other host of removal spells ready for us. We'll do this to maximize our draws like it's the only way really for us to uh, get back into the game is to get rid of this ooze um yeah so three manos choosing what to do sacrifice the cat to oven we got our food so that's plus three life anyway hmm. damage we go down to eight and then seven although we'll gain free life up to ten uh, okay okay there might be a way back in Yeah, sacrifice the cat because I'll definitely be able to bring that one back. Sacrifice the food. I mean, he's got three creatures, so he can make it a lot bigger now. Um, is this just creature spells can't be cast? Players can't spa cast spells from. Okay, so I won't ever be able to double. Um, um, double claim but you know it's fine we'll swing through because it's possible he trades a land or elves for one um, there's no downside we can sacrifice it at any point anyway the only question is do we sacrifice for a food here take that yeah well we, okay we, we let damage go through Okay, this is, yeah, this is a very nice um, turn, next turn, at least it's setting out to be anyway. Okay, for, we're probably going to have to block both of these oozes. Unless he... Uh, see, I don't think Chandra is good enough for him to go for, yeah. Do we keep... Seven, nine? Is that too greedy? Five, six, seven, nine. I think it's better to just be greedy here. I mean, okay. Well, he didn't sacrifice, he didn't exile anything from a graveyards. <laughs> 
it says we can cast a card from a graveyard. Obviously, the ability lights up, but that's a lie. That is a stone cold lie. Um, I mean, we want to keep all these creatures up for blockers. Um, no question about that. Okay, let's stop by sacrificing this, because if we sacrifice this, we get two food. Right, yeah, let's keep that card on top there. Um, sacrifice this, like so. Okay. Now we'll do this so we can sacrifice two food going up to 10 life. Um, I like playing this way. And then next turn we'll be able to kill the ooze with Fatal Push. Start trying to take control of this game here. Okay, how many cards does he have? He has four, four potential creatures. So he can make that an 8-8. Eight, eight. So we will have to make blocks next turn. Um, potentially even the Woe Strider on the Burning Tree Emissary. Um, although I'm not sure it's that um, critical at this point um, because we do want to um, keep utilising our sacrifices of these Chandras for a lot of extra value. Okay. Swings with both. I mean, I'll just cast the blockers. I'll put this here. Um... I don't feel like trading the Woe Strider off for the Burning Tree Emissary quite yet. We're not at that level of ropes. Just, you know, we'll, we'll go for the Fatal Push. Just straight up. <coughs> So he's still killing this stuff um, in case we've got maybe an artifact removal um, to fin our graveyard. I mean, if he was a bit smarter, um, I think he would have um, sacrificed or exiled another card from our graveyard just in case. But it's fine. We don't need another oven. Uh, we can't sacrifice multiple cats anyway because of Graph Digger's Cage. All right, this is not so good. Just pass the damage. I mean, I don't mind. Still got an additional one. Um, I should have drawn a card or at least sacrificed a food there. Um, that's very poor for me. This is a nice card to have in this situation, especially considering we can now sacrifice this to get an additional food. We don't quite win next turn, but we definitely start getting close. Ooh. Can start playing as questing beasts and girl spellbreakers. He's going to give us haste, of course, because he's a greedy, greedy guy. <laughs> Alright, mate. Alright. Sacrificed both of my swamps to the food. Ha. Ha. Auto tapper sometimes is a bit of an enigma. Like, how does it think that that's the correct way to... Priest, I don't think, is uh, winning us this game. And that's kind of what we want to be putting on top, is the cards which just channel us to a win. So, you know, your claims and all of that. Alright. 
Let us see what he's got. He needs to leave up two blockers, um, so I don't think he can kill the Chandra. Hmm. Okay, well he can kill the Chandra, but it would leave him... Well, if you attack with both me, it will leave you dead. But at the same time, if you don't kill a Chandra, I will also just play Devil and win. So, you know, it's a it's a bit of a lose lose for you here, mate. I'm I'm sorry to say it. This way, he dies and. Yeah, all right, there you go. His head explodes and we get the win. So yeah, let's go into our next game. All right, into the next game we go against IJ McGregor. Um, I have had a little break in between games, got myself a coffee, ready to play another one. Okay, we are playing against the old Salt Eye. I, I still stand by that it's not a very good deck. Well, I don't think it's very good at all. Um, in accordance to that, I'm going to lead with Dreadhorde Butcher. Um, just start trying to get it outside of Krava Canarium range. Um, Priest is less good in the Soul Time matchup than Butcher. And of course, Butcher is better the sooner you play it out. Um, so we know he's not got Fabled Passage. Okay, so he goes into Uro. So it's interesting. Do I? I think I go priest into cat next turn. Then he will go Nissa into make a land, and then I will claim it, sacrifice it to priest. Ooh. I'm still going to play it this way. Maybe not cat actually. That makes it a little bit more risky. But do we still? Yeah, we still kill um, the Nissa this way. Um. And it just it makes us a little bit less risk averse. No, a little bit more risk averse. Go on, mate. He should play an extinction event if he's got one. Go to spin the Nissa line. Uh, we know he does, doesn't really have a two drop, so. Okay. Does he have a... Okay, let's just lead with this. Maybe he's got a growth spiral. Hopefully it's not a... I mean, look, if, even if it is a... Um, uh, what's it called? Even if it is a Aether Gust, we still kill Vanessa. Um, and his land, so next to combat. Okay, he goes land tapped, uh, untapped, like a breeding pool into a okay. Okay, we go put a counter on. We will play cat, and then because I'm not sure whether it would tap the breeding pool, um, and leave, leave the black up. A non-token creature you control, so we should be able to get the draw. Yeah, we do. We do draw a card with it. All right, this is a really nice position to be in here now. Uh, he's only got four cards in a graveyard. If he plays Extinction Event, I just think we don't do anything. Um, we keep the two. All right, okay. He plays Thoughtseize. 
takes the challenger away from us, but I don't think that that's the worst thing here. Um, we're still very commanding um, on board. Uh, because the Dreadhorde Butcher now, he's got to block uh, with a land. Um, which makes things really good for us. I, like, I've kind of got to read that he's got an extinction event. Because um, that would make him have to make a decision about whether to play the Nyssa or not. Um, I might be wrong though. Uh, if he gets a forest here, he's probably going for the Euro line. Uh, yeah, Euro. I mean, even though he's got the mana anyway, it's more just of a psychological kind of thing. And like, I, I suppose it leaves up a triome for all three mana untapped, so it's not the worst thing, actually. <coughs> Okay, we'll prioritise Reaper over uh, Butcher here. Um, so the other guy goes down to 6. We draw 3 cards. All of them lands. Um, you know, that kind of stuff happens. We we go with it. Um, we, 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 do, we do not complain. Uh, we don't cry about it like I know some people online would. Um, okay. Now what I'll do is I'll sacrifice Cat before in case he's got a Krava Canarium or something which could just blow us out. Um. Interesting, 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 interesting. So with... That was a draw which I think gets us exact lethal. I'm pretty sure anyway. We get two damage off of Devil, two damage off of Priest, two damage off of Butcher, and two damage off of the Cat. That was a very, very, very nice draw here for us. So yeah, we beat Sultai. A Sultai that had Nyssa, it had Fort Seas, it had Uro. Admittedly it was a slower hand, but even so, it, like, it still had a good curve out and lost. Uh, anyone here surprised? I'm not. I said earlier that I was open to do a, um, a Gruul Agro deck tech in Historic. That is not the same for Sultai, um, because I don't want to lead you guys down a path of playing a poor deck um, that's overhyped because it's got a few good cards in it. Um, yeah. Uh, Nissa is just, I think, it, it's just not good anymore. It reached that point in Standard, and I feel it's time for it to have reached that point in Historic too. Ooh, interesting hand here. Um, I'll keep it. Um, we won't Fort C straight away. I feel like playing Gutter Bones to get an additional 2 damage on Carve. Um, I don't think he'll play in the gate. Um, nor do I think he plays the counter at an SOP1. Eliminate, right. Uh, if you want to eliminate that, go for it, mate. We'll go for that, and then we'll also sacrifice our land on our turn because you could tails end the trigger. He needs to draw two lands to get Nissa, by which point I'm feeling we could have it in a position where we can kill the Nissa straight up. Look, he could he could actually tails end the dreadhorde butch he could tails end this trigger he, he could prevent the um could stop it gaining life hmm 
I mean, whatever happens here, we're killing Anissa. If the extinction events, we play out uh, Woe Strider here. Play out Woe Strider before combat. Oh, Tails End, do you want to just stop the trigger? Oh, you could stop that one too, mate. Or this one. I don't know what it wants to Tails End in my deck exactly. I suppose you could get rid of the Chandras. Alright, here we go. Does he untap this to get a tail's end? Um, still up. I suppose he also gets... I think we have actually have lethal here. Taps. I take it. Next to combat. Good game. There we go. <laughs> Two zero against Soltai. Wasn't that easy? Um, admittedly, they didn't have a great hand. They had to mulligan to six, and I had a fort seize. But I mean, um, I've still got a very positive win rate against Soltai, <laughs> even when they do have um, good hands. Um, the thing about Soltai is it wins if they have the absolute nuts. Uh, but if they have anything other than that. Um, it's it's relative. I think we're favoured, uh, but you know when they've got the classic fork seas into um, Grove Spiral into Euro into Nissa, you know, there's sometimes not much you can do against it. But then that's the same with most decks. You know, if they've got the absolute nuts, you know, if they've got the cards they need every round, every you know, you're always gonna. Um, Chagampha. I have a feeling he's playing Jund Sacrifice. At which point this is a good hand. We've got our Witch's Oven, which protects us from Claim and other Yoink effects. Uh, we've got Double Priest. Okay, we are not playing against um, Jund Sacrifice. We are in fact playing against Simic Paradox Engine. Or maybe a, a different variant of it, but we're definitely playing against a Paradox Engine type deck. What a surprise. Oh. I was hoping that that would be all he could play this turn. Come on, that, well, that, that wasn't a good turn at all for him, wasn't it? Jeez, it. Okay, we get we get the best draw, like card in our deck in that situation. Uh, we'll take that. His turn two might have been play a two two and get a mox and a, wo a mind stone into play, but I mean, we have been drawing a lot of lands lately, and I do only play um, twenty two in the deck. So, oh, is he holding full control to tap tap mox ambering? response or he just doesn't have a spell to play with it because he missed his down drop <sighs> like I feel we're drawing seven lands this game and five spells is a little bit of a, okay, I'll, I will definitely take this draw. This is a draw I will accept. I will only attack, attack with two because I want to leave one priest up um, for if we get a creature and we have to kill one of theirs. There's the eight plan drawn. <sighs> He's got four mana at the moment. Um, he could get himself a Khan. Could he kill? It's, 
seven tap. Good luck, mate. Kong, great creator. What artifact, artifact is he getting? I think Sorcerer Spyglass is a correct play here. How close to lethal are we? I don't know. Not not close enough for me to want to consider it. It might be that we had lethal there, but I think whatever we do here, um, it's going to go well for us. Um, this guy's just been way too mana screwed. Uh, we've got pretty lucky in these games. Yeah. Say he plays um, Sky Sovereign. If he, well, he needs to draw the land for it first. All right. He, he he's tapping for mana this time, which suggests to me that he's got. Oh, it's only going to be a two drop now, actually. Emery. Mill four cards. We're just going to take this and swing in. Uh, I'm going to go for lethal here. Yeah, all right. Um, so the guy's stuck in two lands. It's a little bit unfair, but um, I'll, I'll take the win. This is a weird like deck to play against because you normally you want either Fatal Push or Thoughtsies. You don't really want both because Thoughtsies is, is against control decks where obviously or uh, Soul Tight, which obviously you don't want to play Fatal Push in, and Fatal Push is against aggro decks, which you don't normally want to play Thoughtsies against. However, this deck is kind of a middle ground where it runs off of a lot of small creatures such as Kinan and Emery um, in Uro, where Fatal Push could be nice. However, it's also got the bigger uh, more Simic based cards like um, your Khans um, and likewise that the Forces are good against. Um, also Soul Guide Lantern is very good against it. I'll drop a Kari Zevs, a Chandra, a Devil. Um, I think a Tread Hold Butcher is good in a matchup because take out two gutter bones, it's not that good. Also which is other what else can we do? So I like Priest a lot. I like Devil I like Devil Chandra is very good. Um, Woe Stride is very good. Dreadhold Butcher is very good. Two Fatal Push. Let's go like this. Um, I don't want to drop any claims because I mean they're just a powerhouse in the matchup. Okay. <coughs> Take this hand. But well, that's a hand and a half. Um, that's a draw. Jesus. play it like this. Um, it's a difficult one between playing Priest and uh, that, but I think just allowing him to go off with this next turn is a little bit too mad. He could just sacrifice these for free to draw cards. Um, obviously he can't sacrifice them more than once, but yeah. Okay. 
Actually, it's possible I should have done that next turn, because um, I could have got Elves plus Midnight Reaper, sacrifice it to kill the Gigant for two. Um, so that is probably definitely a big pawn. But we move on from it. It's not too bad. <coughs> Take Paradox Engine, you can always get it back with Emery. Um, that's one of the cards we want to get rid of. Um, he can swing for 5 all he wants. Unless he taps it for mana. Jay, what's, he, what's he playing? Escape. We definitely punted big time by stealing that Yarn War Elves. That was definitely a punt. So we could have won this game as well. Because I think this game's kind of run a little bit away from us now. I'll definitely take that when I've got my Soul Guide Lantern up. Okay. We kind of wanted to get a creature there. Um, yeah. We've got a sacrifice here. Play the oven. Difficult one. Is that the third Kinan now? Yeah. Does he get double that? I mean, that's some nice cards to get. I'm not sure what he gets with Khan um, here. I sacrificed my food before because that's what I'm going to be able to do. Like, what does he get with Khan here? Skyship? This is all a result of us punting, by the way. <laughs> like, if we'd claimed um, the turn after, this we wouldn't be in this position. Draw a land. Not what we want, but I mean, he should have attacked with the Emery. Um, Yeah, we, we, we punted that one big time. Uh, we didn't manage to capitalise on... He also had a Braids in, which is a difficult one to play around. Scrap Heap Scrounger, just get rid of. Yeah, that, that one we messed up big time. I'll, I'll accept that. That's how not to play the game. One lander, we mulligan. This will keep. We'll get rid of the woe strider. Uh, the best card we could get next turn is a swamp or a mountain. Ask and it shall deliver. <laughs> Hopefully he can't storm out. All right. Well, I am now going to leave you with just a forest, mate. Um, I hate to say this, and I hate to do this to you, um, but uh, 
and I will also Yeah, this leaves him with no real good plays if he draws the land next turn. I mean, he didn't anyway if he had Khan, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, okay, so we win. He took a one lander. Just, yeah. I suppose if he drew a, um, a blue source, he had arrows that he could kind of storm off, but yeah. He, he did not. So yeah, that is it. That is it for the video today, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching if you made it to the end. I doubt you have, but yeah, if you're here, Please could you subscribe, leave a like, comment, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next time. Goodbye.